Howdy ho, ladies and joes. This is Friday 22 and I'm coming right back at you, kind of coming at you with a 100 subscriber special or basically just a huge thanks to everyone who's watched my first auto chop saw tutorial. I was not expecting to have it turn out that great. I think as of right now, we're sitting about 7,600 views. Thank you all though. Thank you to all those who thumbed it up, thumbed it down. Obviously, maybe it wasn't what you were looking for or anything like that, but thanks for those comments those likes basically helping me get my channel off the start and as a thank you I came up with another chop saw which I have right here in front of me um, I think it, it'll work a little bit better than the one that I have back over there that I currently use and I actually just came up with this uh, put a little work in got some money got stuff like that kind of got back to lumber tycoon I've been off for a little bit so this still has the same ideas in place. It's still a big chop saw for lava wood, uh, pine trees, anything else that kind of has that big um, thick stump or whatever else uh, a part of it. And so it's for the long pieces that you got to chop down before you put in your sawmill because you know what? It either won't go through your sawmill because it's too big or anything like that. This is what this auto chop saw is here for. Now, I haven't tested it yet because I actually just finished building it not two seconds ago. So... Uh, without further ado, let's give it a test, shall we? And let's give it a test. All right, hang on. So what this, uh, while I'm getting this set up, what this chop saw offers is, oh, let's watch it. What this chop saw offers is a cheaper, more efficient way to go ahead and get it. And there it goes, boom. Like, just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have that auto chop saw. And it's actually cheaper than the last one. I said the last one said about it. Uh, 41,000. This one sits at 3,200. No, no, 32,105. Excuse me. And honestly, it works great. Um, I have these couple hatches right here, right here, and right here. This one is going to go ahead and push chop saws to go out this way. I've decided to do an elevated chop saw system this time just because you get these uh, hatches underneath that does stop the wood from coming in from behind, but also gets that wood out of the chop saw with that original one I had it was getting stuck in here whenever the chop saw was still going and with this one as well it turns off the chop saw so maybe you wouldn't get that spaghetti looking pine uh, wood or whatever else like that so now that you have these you can go ahead and just go shove them in your sawmill and bada boom bada bing just like this this thing is already off all right so it's time for the tutorial part thanks for checking it out already I hope you're excited as much as I am. It's cheaper, it's more efficient, you don't have two lasers, it could be any length of wood that you want, and honestly, as long as you move that chop saw to whatever position you want, be it to the left or right, where my cursor is, you're gonna have a outstanding time, and honestly, just thanks for checking out this video. Uh, hopefully you're gonna enjoy it, give it a like. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First off, we gotta talk about your materials. What do you have to have to make this actually work? Well, all right, let's get these boxes out of the way. I bought those recently. But anyway, um, basically what you're going to need here, this excludes the conveyors. Conveyors are totally on your own. This chop saw is only chop saw, uh, basically. So all the components to make this thing go down and chop wood, that is the only thing this thing uh, incorporates. So basically, uh, the conveyors are not included in the price. But this is what you're going to need so get out your sketchbooks, whatever you need to do, write this down to make you know that you need these items. One, two hatches. You need two hatches. You need a, one chop saw, obviously. You need one OR gate. Two signal delays. A laser and a laser catcher. I can't remember what this is called. Um, yeah, anyway, you'll need one of these as well. So a laser and laser catcher. I can't remember what it's the technical term is, but that's what I'm calling it. So you need one of those you also need one two three inverters all right now onto the wires you need more of these one two three four five six seven eight nine ten wires you need ten wires all right so go ahead and get those items and whenever you come back with those items pause it right now pause the video whenever you get back with those items we're gonna go ahead and get this chop saw off and started who's excited i'm excited let's go Alrighty, so glad you got those components, but first things first now, we're going to start off with the hatches. The hatches are kind of the hard part to put in, so that's what we're going to work on. Um, I suggest you get these short smooth walls, or just short walls, to go ahead and help you out with this venture. Basically, I set up three conveyor belts in the air. 
Um, like depending upon how high or low you put the system is going to increase the difficulty in moving parts and items and stuff like that. So for the tutorial, I have it up as high as possible to go ahead and help you guys out. Where you want to put it from there is totally up to you. So um, you want that short, smooth wall. Let's move it. And I will be putting this short, smooth wall. Uh, you could have... Move it down just a little bit. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get this. Try to get it as center as possible. All right, there we go. And now I'm going to take the first hatch. I'm going to move it. And both hatches are going to function the same and be put in the same way. Basically, you want the lip... Here, let me place this because I got it the way I want it. And it's kind of picky on how you do it. So I put it down just a little bit. You see that space in between the short wall and the hatch. That's about how high up I put it. So I'll place E. All right, so let's move these out of the way so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so the lip. All right, the lip is the part that comes out like this. You want your hatch to open in towards the system. So whatever way you're going to move it in, if your logs will be moving to the left, then you want this, you want your hatch to open to the left that way, all right? Because if you have it open the opposite direction, you have a possibility of kind of shooting your um, lumber out and out of nowhere and just kind of poo, it kind of go off like a rocket and then boom, you don't know where it is. So once you have that hatch in place, you're going to want to grab your conveyor now. Nope, that's not what I want. You get this conveyor, give it a little rotate, rotate, rotate. Maybe a tilt because I think I have it upside down. Nope, now it's upside down. Still upside down. Come on, make this easy for me. Okay, perfect. All right, this works for me, so I'll put it like this. All right, and then place it, and then boom. Um, just make sure you have your direction, put the correct way and I'm going to go ahead and do that with the same hatch over on this side now feel free to speed up this tutorial you're more than welcome to because guess what you may not need these points you may already get what I'm about to say when I come down to this spot so whatever you have to do to go ahead and get this thing built go ahead and do that all right, actually, I'll be right back because I'm having a little bit of problems right now trying to get this centered in the way I like it. So I'll be back in just a jiffy, and I'll have this other... All right, yeah, I'll get this other hatch place, and I'll be right back. Same place. Lip still goes out the exact same direction. It's got to work for both of these. Both lips have to be facing the same direction on the hatches. All right, now that that hatch is done, whoop, it gets stuck by wood. Go ahead and grab your conveyor belt. Give it a move. Give it that move. All right, rotate this, rotate, rotate, rotate. Run in, run, no, not run in. Roll in, roll in, roll in. Come on, come on, come on. Roll in, hi. Maybe, please work. Oh my gosh. Okay, there we go. Bring it up. Make sure your hatches are down whenever you're putting these conveyors up or it'll make your life even more difficult. Come on. Perfect. There we go. Yay. All right. Next thing is next. Get your short wall. Don't have to have these. I strongly suggest them, however. All right. Short wall. And if you're building it above the ground like I am right now, what you're going to want to do is get that short wall, get another short wall, push it out to the side. All right. Now that you have those two short walls off to the side, I still have the same kind of idea and mechanics for having the other one um, work as well and what I'm talking about is the version one chop saw you put a couple of these um, what are these tiles uh, on the floor here so that moves your chop saw slightly above the conveyor belt so it does not uh, glitch out or whatever and my in what you may want to do right now is go ahead and uh, move these hatches up so when you're on the conveyor belt like I am right now you're able to um, stay off to the side while also getting your chop saw put into place. Um, also, you're more than welcome to move the chop saw up and down, around, wherever you need it to be on these conveyor belts. I'll just be putting it close to here just for kind of show and tell issues. And uh, as I mentioned last time, these chop saws can be extremely picky and luckily I got that fairly quick. Alright, 
So that's kind of the hard part, getting that part done. So now that you guys have that part down, it's time to move your short and smooth walls off to the side. You don't need these for the rest of the tutorial. So just kind of have them put off to the side, go put them back on your building like I might need to or anything like that. So what you want to do now is you want to grab your laser. Your laser! All right. Pew, pew. All right, grab your laser. Your laser! All right, you might want to move it just a tad bit away from the uh, hatch right here to go ahead and give you some space later whenever it comes in. So I got it off. Uh, beware, I mentioned this in my last tutorial as well, so if you already watched that, you know what I'm about to say. It does stick out a little bit, it does give it a lip, so um, unfortunately sometimes the wood will get stuck there. That's the only kind of downside of this system, other than that, you're pretty good. And boom, just like that, we got this one off to the side, just phenomenal. Alright, so we got it. Make sure you have it activated. The little orange button. Make sure the orange button is also pushing away from the chop saw. Make sure that your laser is pointing in towards it. All right, and now that you got that done, very much like the last one that I had, go ahead, grab your inverter now, a inverter, maybe not the inverter or all the inverters, but I think you get what I'm saying. Grab this inverter, put it up there. You don't even need a wire here. Just get it close and boom, it recognizes uh, that and make sure your arrow is pointed out a lot of way away from the chop saw arrow goes away from the chop saw next things next want to grab this wire grab it all right this wire is going to place e here and by the way i did get this little part um i can't remember what uh he calls it i did get this part from heath haskins go ahead and check him out on youtube he is a huge lumber tycoon fanatic i would say so uh, I saw this on one of his videos, and I actually ended up kind of being like, hmm, I think that might actually work good with one of the systems I have. So basically what you're making is a one-time like tick distributor or power distributor. So basically what that means is that it just takes one pulse to turn it on and turn the system on or off. All right. So next thing's next, grab another wire. So you get those two wires with your two inverters here. Make sure your uh, inverters are pointed the opposite direction. So arrow coming towards, arrow going away. Next thing's next. You want to go ahead and get your wire now. Put that on the end of your inverter up next to your lasers. Lasers! All right. E place F done. All right. That comes in. Maybe give it a quick test. Up, uh, pop up real quick. Yep, and it changes. Good job. That's what we want. The only downside to this system is that you do get a pulse coming back from your inverter, but inverter only moves one direction, so I wouldn't be ha, one direction. Uh, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Next, you want to get your times, and maybe to make this easier for you, make sure the times are set to full delay on both of them. On both of them, make sure the uh, delays are set to full. All right, put them right next to each other so you don't even need a wire in between it. Now what you're going to want to do is grab this wire, bring this wire right to here. And you might need to finagle these a little bit, get them to the position that are going to help you the absolute most. All right. Put that in the inside. Make sure that both your timers are pointed this direction. It's okay if these are loading up right now because we're about to fix that problem. All right, what you want to do now is grab your OR gate. Move your OR gate. Put it right there. And the reason I'm using this OR gate, you don't have to strongly suggest it. However, the reason I have this OR gate is because the uh, pulse that you are about to see, the pulse that comes out of this and goes into this since it is an or gate it just has to have a, a signal on either side for it to work and it comes out one side so basically what this allows to do is i'm going to move it from this end now and grab another wire move it from the or gate into this spot right here and f finish oh wait oops undo that undo that you actually want to have it go into the opposite side back back Place, E, E. All right, have it go in. F, finish. Cool. Come on, recognize, recognize. Make sure that this wire recognizes that it is on and it triggers the 
inverter section. There we go. And then, so it turns off now on this side as well. And eventually this will run out and it doesn't matter since that impulse is going in that way. Um, grab this wire now and move this wire from the end of this. You can either put it in here or right here, but I'll be putting it right here from the OR gate. Moving this up, 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 up. And this allows you to go ahead and kind of work on your work on that gate that'll open the end part. So make sure that shit comes out of there. Now what you're gonna want, grab this. Time to hook up your chop saw now. Grab this one, move it up to your chop saw. Finish that, all right. You're so close to being done. You just got a couple wires left. So now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to go ahead and have this one. I want this one to be open all the time. So I'm gonna grab it on there, make sure it has that pulse. Move it, put it right up there to that hatch, and F finish. Awesome, and now it's open. Now, by this point in time, it should be done. We have an extra wire left over because I actually made this in one shot. Um, you might need to have another wire based upon it, but uh, I had to earlier. I could not get it to go all the way there. Let's give it a test, a roo. Make sure everything's working okay. back up just a little bit and boom in it goes oh got stuck a little bit let's fix this problem comes in stops this opens oh chop saw it's just a tad bit too big so what you might want to do is you might want to have your chop saw just um, a, a little further up depending upon how big a pieces you're sending through that's my suggestion such as this one is too big that it is actually crushing on this so maybe we'll grab this piece and show and tell this piece. Other than that, the system is working. It's just a little too on the big side. Whoop, and see what I'm talking about with this getting stuck. Oh my gosh. Well, we were doing pretty good. It's just at this point in time, it's kind of being a little finicky. All right, let's try it. This should work. Come on, trying to get it kind of e that even spot. Makes that go down, triggers it. Chop, 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 and we're done. And just like that, it comes up. Oh, what the heck? There it goes. Turns off now. And boom. Woo! Get launched. Uh, just like that, this piece should have moved, and the chop saw should have turned off. So let's check this just one last time to make sure everything's working all right. Make sure I set everything good. And since that this piece is stuck here right now, it'll get kind of stuck in a loop. But as soon as that piece moves then this whole system turns off and this piece stays open just fine and I haven't had a problem really with it getting stuck at all I think it was just because it was so small uh, but whenever you have a large piece that comes in this chop saw right here it'll end up moving right out of your way and the chop saw should be done and gone alrighty guys thank you all so very much for tuning into this episode and <laughs> episode this tutorial, I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys enjoy this one. Have fun building it, have fun kind of using it and stuff like that. Go ahead and actually follow me on Twitter, tell me how it works, at Froggy22, and tell me how it works, tell me what you don't like about it, tell me what you do like about it, tell me all the things you want to do, and tell me all the things you need to say. Tell me what you need to say. All right, anyway. Thanks so much. I was extremely excited to go ahead and have this one come out to you guys. And honestly, I think you're going to enjoy this just as much as I did. So hopefully I wasn't talking too fast or anything. But thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And uh, go ahead and, you know, give me that like, comment, maybe. I mean, I wasn't expecting the last one to turn out like this. Maybe this one will be bigger. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Maybe I'll come up with another design that I just have to absolutely show you uh, later on. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I appreciate you guys so very much. Hope you enjoyed.